Hello students, this is an add-on video from the video how to use an oscilloscope. In this video I want to show you some more details, um, especially here some more functions um, and uh, yeah, how the button works here in this case and so on. First of all, uh, at the moment I have just connected here the function generator to the oscilloscope. So here the positive output and the ground from this function generator is connected here to the probe. I use only channel 1 at the moment, channel 2 is not connected and you see at the moment there is a signal, a sinusoidal signal um, you can see on the screen it has a frequency of uh, uh, 1 kilohertz and peak to peak value of 20 volts. The setting of a channel 1 at the moment is coupling DC so the whole signal we have the correct probe setting of 10 times voltage um, the trigger is uh, set at the moment to source 1 and everything seems to be okay. So I can start with some measurements using here the measure button. If you press the measure button then you get here the new menu measure and you can choose now for, for example the first place here this button in order to display, for example, the frequency. So I have pressed the button already now, and now you can see I can choose here the type. Um, you also can see that this LED here from this knob is on, so I can take now this knob in order to change here the type. So I want to measure here in this case the frequency, for example, for the first place, then I go back, and you see at the moment here the frequency is displayed at one at the first measurement place it's one kilohertz second place for example maybe the period time so the period time for one kilohertz is one milliseconds i go back then i want to measure maybe the peak to peak value as i mentioned it was uh, around about 20 volts you see 20.2 volts and Last but not least, maybe the RMS value of this signal. We are RMS at the moment, 7 volts. And I go back and you see now I have all the values I want to see. If you use the measure button, take care that you have a good stable display of the signal here on the screen. Um, I will change now the voltage per division of this channel up to 50 volts. And you see the uh, signal is not triggered anymore and you see here also some question marks. In this case it means the oscilloscope is not able to measure correctly. On the other side if it's here too small the voltage per division like this you also cannot see anything. You have now the question mark on each measurement place. So this is not a good idea to set this oscilloscope in this way. Take care that your signal is displayed here on the screen it's triggered at the moment and then you have the correct measurements. At the moment channel 2 is switched off and uh, if I want to measure something at this place from channel 2 press the button I go to the source channel 2 you see here the hint channel 2 is off I can go back now and you see also here the channel 2 is off. In order to measure something okay you have to switch on this channel by pressing here the blue button. Now it's switched on as you can see here with a blue line. Then you go back to the measure button, the measure function, but you see okay now channel 1 nothing is measured here at the moment so I can choose now here some measurement values you want to see. So um, this gives you the, the information uh, also if a channel is switched on or off. So take care if you want to measure something that you have switched on the channel. Another nice tool is here the cursor. Before I do this I just switch off the second channel by pressing twice this button and then I press the cursor button. Now the menu for the cursor here appears. I only can choose here the type and the source. At the moment I have only one channel connected to the first channel, channel 1, and I can choose now the type. 
and I want to choose first the type amplitude and you see now here two cursors inside the screen. You also can see now here values where the cursors are. So at the moment um, the cursor 1 here is uh, at 5 volts. If I move now the cursor up and down you see he measures where the cursor is. And um, if I go to the peak value, for example, you see the cursor measures now this value of the voltage. It's uh, around 9.8 volts. If I change now to the second cursor, by pressing this button, you see the cursor is now at the moment at uh, 4.8 volts, minus 4.8 volts. And if I move down here maybe to the other side of the sinusoidal signal, you see I have here minus 10.2 volts in this case. Uh, this cursor function also measures the uh, delta V, so we have a delta V of 20 volts that's equal to the peak-to-peak -peak value in this case. Sometimes it's nice to have this function, this cursor, in order to see where are my voltage level in inside a signal. The other type of the cursor is here, if you press this button, the time cursor. At the moment I have um, selected here cursor 1. And if I move now here, this cursor, you can see here I have uh, selected this cursor. And uh, the important thing or the nice thing is here that the time cursor measures uh, time as well as the uh, voltage at this point here, for example, of the sinusoidal signal. You see here inside is a little cross inside the cursor. And uh, it measures the time and the voltage at this point. So, for example, if I want to measure here now the period time, I start with this cursor maybe at 0. So here is 0 volts at the moment. Some microseconds they are not so important at the moment. Now I change to the second cursor and I go one period here further to the next 0. Um, for example at this point and you see now here the voltages, the time and at this place you see here now also delta T, that means one millisecond, that also means your one kilohertz, and delta V in this case from the cursors is at the moment zero volts. Now I can move also the cursors maybe to the maximum value, so I choose first cursor one here, maybe to the maximum here, and then the second cursor to the minimum, okay. And now you see the delta V here in the middle is again the 20 volts peak to peak value. The digital oscilloscope is also able to save your measurements here using the USB stick. And you can save either an image, for example JPEG, from the wave here, for example, or you can measure all data. That means each single step inside the signal, each setting here at the oscilloscope, and so on. In order to do this, you can check what is saved if you press the Save button or the Print button. So if you press here the Save Recall button, you see here at the second point, Print button saves all to files. That means if you press the print button, everything is saved and this takes a while. I would prefer only print button saves image to file. I choose now save image to file with the print button. Then I go back to my measurements here so that my places are visible. And if I press now save, only the image is saved to the USB stick. You see here with a little clock, it takes a while uh, until it saved the image to the USB stick. Now I disconnect the function generator from the oscilloscope. As you can see, there is no signal anymore uh, because I want to show you now the single mode operation here on the oscilloscope. The question is now, when do you need the single mode operation? And therefore I want to show you two examples here in my simple drawings. The first example is if you want to see here the charging curve of a capacitor. 
then you need the single mode operation. Um, or another example, if you want to see how a switch bounces, then you also need the single mode operation. For this, I have here a switch where I can show you here the bouncing of a switch. And I also want to show you how the charging curve of a capacitor looks like. First of all, I have to set the oscilloscope to useful time base and voltage base. I am working with 10 volts here at the moment, and so I expect 10 volts. It's a maximum. You see the voltage per division is set to 5 volts. It's a little too high, so I am going to set this to 2 volts and move down here the line of channel 1 a little bit down to this position so I can see now the 10 volts later. Next point is uh, time base. Um, it's a little bit critical. I don't know what I expect, so I will set the time base to here 100 milliseconds. Maybe that's okay. Uh, another point is I have to set the trigger. Or I have to check the trigger, especially with a slope. It's a rising slope in my case, and this are the preparation before you uh, press the single button. Now I want to show you the circuit first. On the left side I have here my 10 volts, then I have here a resistor and here's a capacitor and with the oscilloscope I measure the voltage across this capacitor. And in single mode I will switch on then the 10 volts and I want to see what happens with the voltage across the capacitor. Now you can press the button single and important is now that you check your trigger level. So here's the arrow for the trigger level this one here and this must be inside your signal you expect so I expect uh, yeah, rising edge of the voltage here inside 10 volts and now the trigger is here set to 2 volts it's, it's okay and if I power on now the power supply you see I get after a second here now the charging curve of this capacitor the oscilloscope shows you also acquisition complete here and changing the time base, you can go in detail here if you want. You also can take now cursors here in order to see different voltages at different times, for example, inside this curve. So it's very useful here in this case. So the second example is an example here with a switch. And uh, for this, I have powered on the power supply, which is off at the moment. And I press now the single button and now I switch on and you see now the switch has this behavior and if you go, want to go in detail here with the rising edge you have to change the time base. Now I change the time base um, and you see the picture is not good so I have to do the same measurement. So I switch off, press the single button, power on, and now you see more details here in the rising edge of the switch. Here you can see the switch is bouncing. In order to see here more details, I change now the time base and do the same measurement. So I changed now the time base, I switch off, then I uh, press the single button and make the me same measurement and you see now here the details of the bounding of the switch. Now you can measure the time from the first peak to this point where the switch is really switched on. In order to do this you can take the cursors, I take now the time type cursor and I measure the time from, from the left, from the first peak with the first cursor and the second cursor I measure the time where the switch is really switched on here at this position and now you say, see delta T is around about 640 microseconds. The information of the delta T of 640 microseconds is important for example for microcontroller applications where a switch is an input device, so with a useful software you have to debounce the switch.
In the next experiment I want to show you the XY mode here at the oscilloscope. As you can see at the moment I have uh, applied here a sinusoidal signal from the function generator is set to 1 kHz and um, there is a peak to peak value at the moment of 6 volts. Both channels get the signal, so you can see here both channels have the same, same signal at the moment. And in this mode, um, the oscilloscope is running in a YT mode, so it shows the sinusoidal signal depending on T, on the time. With the display button, you can set this mode now, the format here, not to Y, T, you can set it to X, Y, and you see this line. So how is our oscilloscope working now at the moment? You can see this here in the drawing. So channel 1 is used for the x-axis and channel 2 for the y-axis. And if you have both the same signal without a phase shift, you get here a 4 to 5 degree line. The question is now when can you use this XY mode in a real circuit and one example is here on the other side of the sheet of paper a low pass filter. I have built up the low pass filter already and applied here my 6 volt peak to peak from the function generator and what I do now is I measure VR and VC. In the middle of this here I connect the ground of the oscilloscope and I measure VR with channel 1 and VC with channel 2 and because the ground is in the middle I have to invert first the second channel. For this I press here the button for the second channel and you see I have inverted here already the second channel. What I do now is I just press here the display button and change the format to the X, Y mode and you see now this kind of yeah, circle and what I do now is I change the frequency um, up to this value where I get a real circle. So I have to do this here a little bit yeah maybe like this so you get now a real circle and now I can see the border frequency or I can measure the border frequency. I go back here to the display and, and set it to YT and now I can measure here the border frequency for this low pass filter at the moment is yeah, around about 140 hertz and you see both voltage the amplitude of uh, VR and VC is the same. We have a phase shift and with this phase shift in the um, X, Y mode I get here a circle. With the next circuit here, a little counter with a 4017, I want to show you how to use an external trigger. As you can see on the right side, this is the input, the clock input for this counter, the green LED, and the counter counts here from 1, 2, to 3 and starts from the beginning. I want to show you the time diagram for this counter here. It's uh, this drawing and you can see here the first diagram is a clock signal. It's going on and off the whole time and the channels are on separately so one after the other and then it starts from the beginning and the question is how can I make this visible with a oscilloscope. Therefore I have connected the first channel of the oscilloscope to the clock signal and the second channel is connected at the moment to the output 3 of the counter. Okay, you see now here on and off of the channel 3. If I change now the output from the counter to the second output, yeah, you can see the same. So you cannot see at the moment the time dependency between the output 2 and 3 of this counter. So what you can do now is you can use the external trigger. So I have connected here another probe which is uh, to be connected to maybe uh, output 1 of the counter 
and you have to change the trigger in the trigger menu to the external trigger so the source must be set to external at the moment it's nothing is connected so I connect now here the probe uh, for the external trigger to the output one of the counter now I change the frequency to have a better view here on the screen so I set the frequency now to uh, 1 kilohertz change the time base as you can see here and what is also important at the moment is that the trigger level is here inside the 9 volts so I have applied 9 volts so trigger is here in 500 millivolt it's okay you also can move it here a little bit maybe to 1 volt so you get here now a stable view and you see at the moment I have connected channel one or output one of the counter so it starts at this point now if I change the uh, um, output to to the second one then you see it starts here at the beginning here directly here and the third one is here first one second one third one so you can see here now really the time dependency between the channel using here the external trigger if you see now this digital signal you see okay it seems to be a square wave signal but mm, it's not really a square wave what you have to do in this case if you see this kind of signal but you want, you want to have a square wave or you have a square wave then you have to compensate the probe therefore you have to take a screwdriver and turn here the screw so up to this point where you have really a square wave and for the output second channel also like this now the probe is compensated and everything is okay in this video we have seen some more details using the oscilloscope, so I hope it helps a little bit. So thank you and good luck.